Welcome. My name is Paul Mitchell. I'm a professor of agricultural and applied economics here at the University of Wisconsin in Madison. And this is a lecture on taxes, a farmer's perspective. Um, this is for my class AAE 320. Um, our learning goal here in this short video will be understanding from a practical perspective just how the major types of taxes work for farmers. Um, commonly, farmers pay several taxes, but the property taxes are very common in most of the world. Uh, but here in the U.S., there, you know, most, there's various municipalities, the counties, um, school taxes are all paid as part of property taxes. There's sales taxes for many items we buy. Um, and then also there are employment taxes, um, if, where if you hire somebody, you pay part of some taxes. The ones we're going to focus on here, though, are going to be income taxes, self-employment taxes, gift taxes, and estate taxes. Um, sometimes called death taxes. And for, for this part here, we're going to focus primarily on income self-employment taxes for this, um, the traditional tax forms. Um, what I'm going to do, compared with this, will be another video on where I actually go through the tax forms that traditionally um, farms um, file. But we're, we file a form called the Form 1040. It lists your various sources of income, your wages and salaries you earn, any money made like on dividends or pension, Social Security. Um, and then you bring various things in from Schedule 1, which we're going to spend a lot of time on. That's where all the action is. Um, and then you calculate something called your adjusted gross income, your AGI. That's used for um, participation in federal programs of various sorts. Um, there's a business um, income tax deduction of 20% uh, allowed. Um, that it, That's a new um, law in the last few years. Um, the last part here is um, then Schedule 1. And that's where, like I said, the, the action is. That's where you bring in information. Um, earnings from a Schedule C, um, capital gains or losses from a Schedule D, depreciation recapture on um, Form 4797. Um, you got farm income, uh, Schedule F. There's also um, self-employment taxes that are adjustments on Schedule 1. We'll go through all those on the paired video that goes with this one. Um, the other one is itemized deductions, Schedule A. This was one of the biggest changes um, with the 2018 um, tax um, law changes. Traditionally, a lot of people did this where you write off things like your home interest, um, on your interest in your home mortgage. Um, all, all, there's lots of various things, moving expenses, et cetera. Um, and, and then that was what they've done is raise the deduction. It used to be much lower, 5800 for a single or almost 12000 for married filing joint. What they did is raise it much higher to um, it's 24000 now for a married filing joint, which makes it less likely that people will claim it. So it's just less paperwork for everybody. Um, and then once you get all done, you take your adjusted gross income, your AGI, subtract off some of these deductions, such as itemized deductions or the standardized one. Then you calculate your income tax on line 44 of that form, and then you take that to the income tax brackets. And that's where I'm going to spend more of the time here is um, going into those brackets. Um, so what we have in the United States is what they call a progressive income tax. The earnings on your income above different levels as you go up the brackets, it gets higher and higher percentage of that income earned in those brackets is taxed at higher rates. And so the first, um, if we'll stay with the single right now, single um, person, the first $9,875, you pay 10% of that as your tax. If you're married filing joint, it's essentially double at $19,750. Um, then for the money earned above that, that level, those, that bracket, you actually pay 12% of that tax on that income. So for if you made $10,000, the first part of your income, the 98.75 would be um, taxed at a 10% rate. Then the difference between 98.76 all the way up to $10,000, that part would be taxed at a 12% rate. And then you slowly march up the brackets. And right now with the new law, the highest bracket is 37%. So if a single person filing a single tax form, all your income earned about 5,800 I'm, I'm sorry, 5,000 $518,400 would be charged at 37%. A married couple would be $622,050. Anything above that would be charged at, or taxed at a 37% rate. And, and it goes down from there. Um, the other thing, these index, the, these bracket numbers, that's why they're so different is they're indexed by inflation. So they will adjust each year or every few years. So the way it actually shows up is more realistically, it's like, say you earn $45,000. Um, well, that would put you as an individual taxpayer, would put you in this third bracket here. What you do is you pay forty six seventeen fifty plus 22% of the amount owed over um, that um, between. So here, if we had 45,000, 45,000 minus 4125, you'd pay 12, 22% of that. What they've done is, I'm going to go back here, is they've gone through and calculated, okay, the first 10% or the first 9875 at 10%, the next chunk all the way up to 4125 at 12%, and now the part over. 
what that that they've done is calculated that taxes on those first two brackets would be forty six seventeen dollars um, and fifty cents. And then you owe twenty two percent of everything over the the, the bracket cutoff. Um, the table below here is for the married filing joint, and it's the same general concept as they've gone through and done the the bottom part of the bracket for you. So all you have to do is go in and find your income level and do the calculation. So if you plot this graphically, um, on the horizontal axis here is the taxable income. This would be like your adjusted gross income. And then the top part here would be the tax owed in straight dollars. Um, and then the bottom figure is the same horizontal axis, the taxable income, but the vertical, vertical axis is essentially the number from above, above divided by the, the horizontal axis. So it gives it as a percent or a rate. So we'll start, <clears throat> we'll just do a nice round number of 100,000. We can see you would owe somewhere around, it looks like about $32,000 in taxes, 100,000, so 32 divided by 100,000. Um, well, that's not right, but it should be here. It has it as a point of um, a 20%. Um, so you give you a sense as you go, what I'm really trying to show here, the number's a little off um, when I'm reading them quickly here, is um, as you go up the figure here, um, you, you're, this is the effective tax rate, the, how much you'd actually be paying in taxes. So $100,000, it's about 17, 18%. 200,000, you're paying about 23, 24%. 400,000, you're up to about 27, 28%. You can see 500,000, you're paying 30%. So it does rise um, and you can see the kinks in it as well. That's the part that's kind of uh, surprising there is that kink. It bends over, but it's not a smooth bending over. And so sometimes if you're doing taxes, you're at those kink points, you'll be surprised how quickly it changes. So this is the, the same numbers just zoomed into the first 200,000 instead of all the way up to 700,000. But you can see as your taxes, as your income goes up, your taxes go up, um, they slowly increase faster and faster, and it creates a bending over as in terms of the actual rate, the percent of your total earnings that are taxed. Um, the last part I wanna talk briefly about is self-employment taxes. We'll talk more carefully about them in the Schedule SE that they, people file. But uh, if you have self-employment income, Schedule F, CRP payments for the, um, the Conservation Reserve Program, farmers often use Schedule K-1 if you're like a partner or a, have an LLC you're part of, a Schedule C if you work for yourself or you get um, if, um, income from a, a, your own company that you own, um, then you file a Schedule SE. Traditionally, um, normally you and your employer have a um, split the taxes, the Medicare or mostly Social Security then some Medicare taxes. And so normally you pay both, uh, you pay one half and your employer pays the other half. But if you're self-employed, you have to pay both halves. And so the employment taxes are 15.3%, mostly um, of which is Social Security, on the first 132900 and then everything above that, you pay 2.9%. Um, that's the Medicare um, part of it. And it's all indexed for inflation. So next year, instead of 132900 it'll likely be a different number. And so what you do is you calculate your self-employment taxes owed on the income based off of these, this bracket, this cutting point at 132.9, where you fall out on that. And then in line six, you get to deduct half of those from your, your adjusted gross income because it's, they're giving you credit for the, half, the, the two halves. You, pay, you should only have to pay one half um, in terms of um, figuring out your income. Whereas as if you'd earned it from a company, that's the way it would have been. But because you work for both halves, you pay your self-employment taxes, but then you get credited for the half that normally you wouldn't have paid in terms of your income. It's just a, it's a, it's a slight deduction, that's all. All right, so we've gone through all this stuff. We talked about you know, income and all those other taxes. The last part here is gift taxes and estate taxes. If you give some th something or some money to somebody, you might owe um, gift taxes. Um, there's a form for that. We'll talk about that. That happens is when older generations might be giving uh, access to assets, a farm assets to a younger generation. And so you have um, gift tax forms. There's an annual exclusion and some lifetime exclusions that you would declare on that gift tax form. Then there's an estate tax. When you die, your estate has to file your final tax forms and potentially based off how much assets you have, you might owe taxes on that as well. And you have to declare it and then pay taxes accordingly or your estate does. <clears throat> 